question that deals with the calculation of pH at the equivalence point, uh, like titration between a weak acid, which is benzoic acid here, and sodium hydroxide. This comes from our textbook on page 738 of Brown and others, definition. I'll read you the question. It says, calculate the pH at the equivalence point when 40 mL of 0.025 molar benzoic acid with a Ka of 6.3 times 10 to the minus 5 is titrated with 0.05 molar sodium hydroxide. So we begin by just portraying what happens during the titration. When the sodium hydroxide is added to benzoic acid, we form the benzoate anion. And because it is a titration, we're going to have the same amount of moles of sodium hydroxide as there are moles of benzoic acid. So we find out the first thing, how many moles of benzoic acid? 40 mL is 0.04 liters times the molarity of 0.025 gives 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of benzoic acid. So we need 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of sodium hydroxide solution to titrate that amount of benzoic acid. We are only told that the concentration of the solution is 0.05 molar, so we don't know how many mL are going to be needed. So we did a, con a, a calculation of the number of the volume times the molarity is given to give you the number of moles. We know the number of moles has to be 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3. We know the molarity is 0.05, so x is the volume, and the volume turns out to be 20 mL. So at equivalence, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of NaOH is needed, and 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of benzoate is produced. So at equivalence, we have benzoate floating around. This is the, con the conjugate base of benzoic acid. So the next step in our calculation is to find out what the total volume is. It's going to be 40 from the 40 of benzoic acid plus the 20 that's added from the titration. So the total volume of our solution is 60 milliliters, and it has 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of benzoate in it, dissolved in it. If we divide that by the volume, we find out that the concentration of benzoate anion is 1.6 recurrent times 10 to the minus 2 molar. The next step is to find out the Kb value of the benzoate anion, the conjugate base of this weak acid, benzoic acid. So we use the ion product of water uh, to find out that Kb for this substance is 1.58 times 10 to the minus 10. We then show the next equilibrium that takes place. The benzoate anion represented as A minus from now on, abstracts a proton from water and it generates benzoic acid and a hydroxide ion. This equilibrium proceeds with an equilibrium value of 1.58 times 10 to the minus 10. So we set up the standard equation Kb is equal to the concentration of benzoate times the hydroxide concentration over the concentration of benzoic acid that forms as a result of the deprotonation of water. The result is we represent it as a algebraic equation, x squared over 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2. It generates a trinomial. We can plug it into the uh, um, we can plug it into the, the quadratic formula. In this, in this situation, we could actually get away with doing that. Uh, we could say it's x squared over 1.6 recurring times 10 to the minus 2, because this, this amount of x is going to be a very small amount and it's kind of hard to put a dent in it, but we went for the exact value that you would get from using the quadratic formula, and it was easy because the calculator did it for us. So we got 1.626 times 10 to the minus 6. That represents the hydroxide concentration. This negative number that the calculator generates is the other solution to the quadratic equation that represents this curve, but it's not a, it's not a useful number because it's a negative concentration, which is impossible. We then plug in the OH concentration into the hydroxide concentration into the pH, the pOH equation. pOH is equal to negative log of OH minus concentration. Gives you a pOH of 5.78. And we convert that to a pH by subtracting it from 14. We get a pH of 8.21. So you can see that the presence of a weak of the conjugate acid, sorry, the conjugate base of a weak acid base supplies the solution ever so slightly. It gives a pH of 8.21. In the second question, part B, it asks. 40 milliliters of 0.1 molar ammonia is titrated with 0.1 moles, with 1.1 molar hydrochloric acid. Here is the titration equation. It generates ammonium because you're adding a strong acid to ammonia. There's 40 milliliters of 0.1 molar. We don't know how many milliliters of hydrochloric acid we're going to need, but we can see that the same concentration, so it's very, it's trivial. It's going to be the same volume because of the same concentration. So 40 milliliters of hydrochloric acid is going to be added to achieve equivalence. 
which means the total volume of solution is going to be 80. Then what we do is we follow the equilibrium effect um, of the conjugate acid of ammonia, which is ammonium. This ammonium is a weak acid in its own right. It will donate a proton to water, forming the hydronium ion. We find that the Ka for ammonium is 5.5 times 10 to the minus 10. Oh, we did that over here, sorry. Uh, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 divided the Kb of ammonia. Gives you the Ka of ammonium using the, uh, uh, the auto-ionization of water as the, uh, as the standard, because these are all aqueous solutions. The result is that we set up a, an equation depicting the equilibrium where x squared represents the x for the OH minus concentration, the H3O plus concentration, and the concentration of ammonia. We do an approximation again because 10 to the minus 10 is such a small number that this, the value of this number x is going to be very tiny compared to the value of 0.05. So this is a valid approximation. We find out that x is equal to 5.2 times 10 to the minus 6. That is equal to the hydronium concentration. And we plug it into the uh, pH equation, we get that the pH turns out to be 5.28.